Hello everyone, my name is Jane Sykes uh, and in this presentation I'm going to be presenting some pearls from my webinar on lethal leptospirosis, a preventable disease. So leptospirosis is a globally important zoonotic spirochetosis that accounts for more than 1 million human cases each year. However, these numbers are likely gross underestimates because leptospirosis in people is a flu-like illness and therefore signs are very nonspecific and many cases go unrecognized. It's also a significant cause of multi-systemic disease with renal failure in dogs. And it's important to recognize that every organ in the body can be affected um, in dogs with leptospirosis. Infection occurs worldwide and even in arid parts of the world um, because of ingestion of infected reservoir hosts or possibly irrigation practices in arid areas. The most important species causing disease in dogs and humans are Leptospira interrogans and Leptospira kirschneri. Leptospirosis is entirely preventable through the use of efficacious leptospirosis vaccines. So currently the reservoir hosts, which may be domestic or wild mammalian um, reservoir hosts, um, potentially also some reptiles, um, the, re the reservoir hosts that transmit infection to dogs are largely unknown as well as to people. Although rodents are generally considered important for human infection in both urban and rural environments. With the application of methods like PCR, um, other wildlife and domestic animal reservoir hosts are being identified. Um, although not all strains found in reservoir hosts may go on to infect dogs as well as people. When incidental hosts like dogs and humans become infected with Leptospira, they develop more severe disease with, than reservoir hosts because the organism is adapted to reservoir hosts and those reservoir hosts tend to develop mild or subclinical infections. When incidental hosts are infected, um, because of the infl inflammatory response and immune response to the organism, they tend to have shorter periods of shedding of low intensity and shedding is often intermittent. Therefore, it's quite difficult for incidental hosts to transmit infection to other incidental hosts. And so the zoonotic risk, although present, is likely to be a lot uh, lower than what has previously been suggested. Instead, most disease in people results from exposure to reservoir hosts, such as working with livestock, wildlife trapping, and working in sewers. In developed countries, most cases in people result from recreational activities involving contaminated water sources, um, such as triathlons, canoeing, and kayaking. So moving on to diagnosis, um, the most commonly used diagnostic test and the gold standard diagnostic test for leptospirosis is the microscopic agglutination test. In this test, serial dilutions of patient sera are reacted with a battery of different cultured serovars, uh, and veterinary panels typically include six or seven different serovars. In human medicine, um, panels often contain more than 20 serovars. There's a number of problems with the MAT test. Firstly, it's an antibody test, and because leptospirosis is an acute disease, Usually affected dogs have negative MAT tests early in the course of illness. False negatives can also occur if there's insufficient serovars in the panel and the dog is actually infected with an unrelated serovar. We also see false positives with this test from previous exposure that's subclinical as well as vaccination. So if a dog, for example, swims in a lake and gets exposed to leptospira but doesn't develop clinical illness, which is actually the most common outcome in all likelihood, um, and then that dog subsequently eats a bottle of ibuprofen, um, comes to your clinic with acute renal failure, and you do a lepto test, it's positive, it might make you think that the dog has leptospirosis when in fact it has ibuprofen toxicity. In addition, when the MAT test is reported, the laboratory usually lists the serovars and titers to each serovar, and multiple titers generally reflect cross-reactivity among the serovars. 
typically um, the highest titer, the organism that has the highest titer is interpreted as the infecting serovar, um, but multiple studies have shown that there's very poor correlation between the organism with the highest titer and the true infecting serovar. In addition, those titers, the pattern of positive results can change over time. My recommendation because of these problems with a MAT test is that you either don't do this test at all or you commit yourself to doing both acute and convalescent phase testing one to two weeks apart. And often the convalescent phase um, result can be obtained before the dog leaves the hospital if it's in hospital um, for several days or um, at a recheck examination. Because of the cumbersome nature of the MAT test, um, several ELISA assays have been uh, developed that can either be performed in a veterinary diagnostic laboratory or in a veterinary clinic itself. So examples of these assays include the SNAP lepto from IDEX laboratories, which is an, a point of care in clinic assay, uh, the witness lepto from Zoetis, uh, which is also a point of care assay, and the immunocomb canine leptospira assay from Biogal, um, which is another point of care assay. These tests, again, like the MAT test, all detect antibodies to pathogenic serovars, but they have the same clinical sensitivity and specificity issues as the MAT test. In other words, they're often negative early in the course of illness, um, and they can be positive as a result of previous exposure or vaccination. And there's really a tendency with these in-clinic assays to jump to conclusions. So you get a negative result and you go, oh, it's not lepto, um, when it could just be too early. Or you get a positive result and go, oh, the dog has lepto, when actually it's from previous exposure or vaccination. The witness assay from Zoetis is an IgM-based assay, so it's less likely to be affected by previous exposure or vaccination. Um, however, um, still some dogs that, are, that have been vaccinated within three months um, uh, of um, being tested could still have positive results. So uh, the potential for false positives from previous vac vaccination or exposure still does exist with that assay. There are also PCR tests for leptospirosis that detect um, leptospira DNA in blood or urine. Um, and it's important to test both samples, blood and urine, because in the first week of illness, the organisms are in the blood, and then after that, they're in the urine. Also, um, we don't recommend testing dogs that have previously received or recently received antibiotics that are active against lepto um, because it makes PCR go negative very quickly. The other problem is that you can find leptospira DNA in the urine of healthy dogs. And so just because you find leptospira DNA in urine doesn't mean necessarily that your patient has leptospirosis. There are, also, there are also now in-clinic assays for lepto that are PCR-based um, becoming available. And so, for example, Biogel makes an assay called PCR Run that can be used to detect leptospira DNA in blood and urine in the veterinary clinic environment. So because of the problems with the diagnostic tests that are available, it's really important to be able to have a high index of sus suspicion for lepto and know the pattern of clinical abnormalities that um, are typically present in leptospirosis. And this is a real pattern recognition disease. The clinical and laboratory abnormalities um, often follow a pattern and they're very similar in both people and also in dogs. So what are the clinical abnormalities that you need to look out for? So remember that lepto is really an acute illness um, and it's really uncommon for it not to be associated with renal failure when um, disease occurs. So all of the signs listed here um, would be things that you would look out for in dogs with renal failure to increase your suspicion for leptospirosis. So firstly, evidence of cholestatic liver damage in association with renal failure, an early defervescence, in other words, dogs get a fever and then the fever goes away quickly, 
um, reluctance to move, which results from myositis caused by the organism, um, and abdominal pain, which can be due to the myositis, kidney pain, as well as pancreatitis. Dogs with leptospirosis often have mild peripheral lymphadenomegaly or abdominal lymphadenomegaly on ultrasound, and that just suggests that they have a systemic inflammatory disease, and in association with renal failure, um, really it narrows the list of differentials greatly, because really only thinking about lepto or possibly bacteremia and pyelonephritis that would cause that. Um, many dogs with lepto have pulmonary complications, which may be manifested by tachypnea. Um, and on blood work, you should look out for, in association with azotemia, leukocytosis, which again could reflect bacterial pyelonephritis or leptospirosis, thrombocytopenia, which occurs in at least 50% of affected dogs, a normal potassium despite anuria or oliguria um, because of the effect of leptospira on the sodium potassium ATPase in the kidneys. They're often not hyperkalemic as uh, is the case for other causes of acute renal failure. Increased CK due to the myositis um, and both proteinuria and glucosuria. And glucosuria can occur with any cause of uh, acute tubular damage, but it is particularly common with leptospirosis. So other uh, less recognized clinical manifestations that you should watch out for are evidence of pancreatitis, um, myositis, which I mentioned already, about 10% of the cases that we see have uveitis, um, punctate retinal hemorrhages have been reported in dogs with lepto and respiratory distress due to leptospiral pulmonary hemorrhage syndrome, uh, which can look a little bit like ARDS. So um, currently vaccines for lepto in dogs are whole bacterins um, and they provide zero group specific protection. Um, and in the United States, since introduction of four serovar vaccines containing Gripotyphosa, Icterohemorrhagii, um, Pomona and Canicola, um, we really have not seen uh, very many, if any, uh, dogs developing leptospirosis when properly vaccinated with those vaccines. However, we certainly did see leptospirosis in dogs that were previously vaccinated with only two Zerovar vaccines containing Icterohemorrhagia and Canicola. And that's been the case in other parts of the world as well. So we recommend four Zerovar uh, vaccines for all dogs, including small breed dogs, um, because now um, small breed dogs are really at increased risk of lepto when compared with large breed dogs, because in all likelihood, they're not being vaccinated for lepto because of fear of adverse reactions. However, the newer vaccines have really a reduced um, adverse reaction profile because they've been cleaned up considerably. Um, and um, the overall rate of reactions is not much greater than with DHP vaccines. In terms of suspect patients, again, I wanna emphasize that the risk of zoonotic transmission from affected dogs appears low, but we still do uh, recommend precautions. Treatment is initially with ampicillin uh, when dogs are nauseous or vomiting. And then as soon as dogs are, are st stop vomiting, um, then you can commence oral doxycycline, uh, which is the best antibiotic at eliminating the organism from the kidneys. And we recommend no more than two weeks of treatment. For dogs that are properly hydrated but remain anuric or oliguric, really the only option is hemodialysis, um, and that's extremely expensive and often not available. So it's really better to prevent the disease through vaccination. Typically, our dogs uh, in the United States that need dialysis for leptospirosis have um, bills that exceed um, $8,000 to $10,000. Um, we recommend posting contact precautions and wearing gloves and a gown. We don't allow pregnant women to handle suspect patients and uh, we use appropriate disinfectants, which is really any disinfectant for lepto because it's very susceptible to or a variety of hospital disinfectants. Certainly don't need to use bleach 
um, but uh, a disinfectant like accelerated hydrogen peroxide um, or even a quat would be effective against lepto. Um, unfortunately, quats are not effective against other pathogens in veterinary environments. So um, using a disinfectant uh, that's active against non-enveloped viruses would also be active against lepto. Um, we recommend um, removing precautions uh, after 48 hours of antibiotic treatment because um, after two to three days of antibiotic treatment, it's very difficult to detect the organism in the urine. And we don't typically isolate lepto patients because they often need um, critical care uh, and close monitoring. So that's the end of my presentation. I hope you learned um, some things about Lepto from it and uh, thank you very much for attending.